the last time I was here was at Christmas, and in the, in the ceremonies I saw, it seemed that St Stephen's was the real lifeblood of the community. Is that an accurate description? I think so. That's what we've tried to achieve here. I mean, when I arrived what, five and a half years ago, there didn't seem to be anything happening in Perth at all. The church was virtually closed down. Uh, no real agencies working in Perfleet. And then I bumped into somebody from Children's Centre who was being paid to work here and nothing was happening. And basically they said, we can't do anything because we've no centre. At that time I was living on my own. So basically I emptied the house and moved Children's Centre into the house. And gradually it snowballed from there. You know, we've got Children's Centre working. We've had lots of other agencies co now coming into to perfectly to work. But the, at first there seemed to be a reluctance of people to, to come here and do anything and uh, we I think we got over that and uh, through working with the community forum as well we've put on some big events and uh, people are beginning to see yeah it's, it's a good place to be and uh, things are happening yeah so that's, but that's how I feel church should be, it should be the, the hub of the community yeah. And, and Ray yourself as well you want to see the, the what happens in the Children's Centre advertised and promoted as part of a, a good feel about Perthley, don't you? Well, yes, because I think that the uh, you know the more we can advertise um, uh, what goes on here and what goes on in the community, uh, number one is that we're helping the community, uh, doing our part to help the community, and um, also helping to provide, provide a service as well. And of course, obviously, um, you know, uh, people get to know us and uh, the church builds up as well. Um, so I, I, I would say yes, that uh, I think what we're doing is it's a great job. Um, because would you say the church has, so speaking business parlance, but a unique selling point? This one has. Yeah. Um, it, luckily, the, the church was never actually built. Uh, what, what you see here is, is the church hall. And it was easy to turn it into a, a multifunctional building. Mm. Lots of other places that don't have that start. Whereas we had a, a, a building that had been used for worship, nothing else. Uh, and we thought, right, let's, let's use the building to the, to the good of the whole community, and that's, and that's what we try to do. Yeah. What, what would you like to see for Perthley in 2010 and beyond? Uh, I would like to, to see the different parts of Perthley, the different communities actually coming together a lot more. Um, a lot of people moving in, a lot of people move out, but I'd like to see a much more stable community. Um, a community where people feel safe, um, where there are things to do, where there are local amenities, um, and, and a much uh, happier place to be, um, where there's things for, for people of all ages. Um, that's what I'd like to, to see Perfleet become. Um, there's lots of talk of regeneration. Over the last few years it's been about increasing house numbers and, and very little else. What I want to now see is the infrastructure going in to support the new housing. Um, and I, I know that's been an issue with things like the health centre, local shops um, and things like that. We need, we need the, the infrastructure now that, that will support the, um, the growth that Perfleet's gone through in the last few years. But the plans that the Development Corporation have and regarding the green light from uh, the communities regarding £750 million pounds worth of planning, that, that, you must be thrilled about that. Yes, so long as it's achievable, so long as it uh, is put in with regard to what actual residents of Perfleet want. My fear is uh, that uh, the development will be what the Development Corporation want and not necessarily what Perfleet needs and that's always a juggle. Uh, I know they rely heavily on private funding, um, corporate funding and that as we know is, is, is dried up. Um, so I think there's big question marks over the development at the moment but I would like to, I would like to see a, a nice town centre. I, I would rather see a good development of the the facilities along the, the riverside mm. because when you're next to a river I think as a town you need to make the most of what you've got mm. and I would love mm. to see the, the, the town centre be more nearer the river because that will draw people in. Um, so I have question marks over some of the ideas but on the whole I, th I think development is, is good for Perfleet 
new people coming in is good for Perth Fleet, but at the same time it's got to be balanced with people who are already here, who, who are finding it difficult to get doctor's appointments, uh, who are struggling with transport, schools uh, and, and issues like that. I, I want to see more of the infrastructure happen before any more housing. And, and Ray, we met last week at the when the Year 7 was Mormons and Park Academy That's correct, came, yeah. came over. And, and it was interesting when you asked that question, who starts wars? And then, you know, in the week in which there was a survey that said students thought that, you know, in other places around the country thought Adolf Hitler was a German football coach, yeah. the students there immediately came up with ideas about what they uh, start wars. So That's that right. must have been very encouraging, um, you know, to see such intellectual stimulation. Well, yes, it was, because... Um, uh, you know, I've always, I, 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 I think we all have believed in, is the fact that um, who starts wars is ourselves. Um, and um, I, was waiting, I was waiting for, for one of the children to actually say, well, yeah, we do. But obviously we got answers like Mr Blair and this sort of thing, if you remember. Which was quite interesting because the people obviously know a little bit about politics at kids at age. Um, but this is the thing which... You know, I look on it perfectly because uh, we here actually um, run a youth centre and basically we are the only youth centre in this area. Um, I know that uh, ably they keep talking about doing something but it never seems to get there. Um, but here Andy and I decided to start our own bar and bus but in the church itself rather than on a mobile bus. Um, and we've been going now for about, is it five years, isn't it? Mm, yeah, five yeah. years. And we've had various kids coming through, our, you know, through the doors. And they've, we've even had a, um, a trip to Australia with a group as well. Um, but I think the, uh, the youth have got a very, very important part to play. Uh, uh, they really have. Um, as you know, that so many people are ready to sort of push the youth away. But I think that they've got a very important part to play because they are the future of if not perfectly, or the future of our country anyway. Um, and uh, so, so of course we are doing this youth centre, um, but of course one of the biggest problems is of course is getting helpers to help, as you know. Uh, and, we'd love to, and we'd love to see the, see the whole thing expand from you know, a young age upwards. And, uh, yeah, and, I, and I feel that um, uh, young people have got a lot to play. Um, and uh, at that service, as you mentioned, uh, when it was the um, Ormiston Park uh, Academies, uh, Year 7, um, I was quite actually um, pleased with some of the answers that, that the kids came out because uh, it was quite surprising.